and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confer and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome that separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day, and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, and across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. 
God made the wild animals, wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand now to sing our second hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Tomorrow, 
for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. The reading we've heard this morning from the Old Testament, thank you David very much for reading it so, so well, is surely among the best known parts of the Bible. These verses from the very beginning of the book of Genesis are the foundation of all that follows in the great story of God which we read in the Bible. These opening verses reveal to us some essential knowledge about God the Creator and about God's creation. Here we learn that there is a relationship between God and the world. And also, that the existence of the world and everything in it is no mere accident. Rather, the world came into being because God wanted it to. Creation is part of God's purpose and has a place in God's heart. Not only that, but God values the world not because it might be useful, or might be a means to an end, but because it has its own unique value. In other words, this part of Genesis tells us that the world is precious to God simply because it is what it is. As we hear these words of Genesis, we begin to discern a pattern in the way they're written. Certain words and phrases occur over and over again throughout the text, such as, there was evening and there was morning, and then, and God said, which leads to, and God saw that it was good. The repetition of these phrases emphasises the sense of order which God weaves into creation. God speaks. A new part of creation comes into being. God affirms that it's pleasing. And that day rolls onward into the next. And the process of creation begins once more. And the pattern of these verses with their repeated phrases suggests something else about this part of the book of Genesis. That it is a story which opens up our understanding of what God is like and how the world is connected to God. There have, of course, been many arguments that this first chapter of Genesis is a record of how creation happened, and that it's something of an ancient scientific document. But this interpretation doesn't align with the world in which the text was written. The people of ancient Israel can't be thought of as scientists seeking the method of how God actually formed the elements of the world, the earth, the sun, the sea, and the sky. Rather, this story, this poem, is displaying, is celebrating the meaning of God and creation. It is a good, good news story about something which God did to bring into being something which did not previously exist, and which offers the world a wonderful prospect of a relationship between creator and creation. But against this background of the proclamation of God's creative power, there is another purpose at work in this text. These words of Genesis were probably written, uh, gathered, set down, in the 6th century BC, the period in which the majority of the people of Israel were taken into exile in Babylon. So it appears that this story of creation 
was partly inspired by a desire to remind God's people that God watches over creation and will bring it into a state of well-being. To those who were in despair in exile, these words declared that the God of Israel is the Lord of all life. So it seems that these familiar words at the beginning of the Bible might have more to say to us than we first imagined. Perhaps this story is not only an imaginative description of the relationship between God and creation, but is also a beacon of hope for those who are facing sorrow and loss. In the last seven days, the world has focused attention on the devastation of large areas of Turkey and Syria following the catastrophic earthquakes which struck there last Monday. The scale of destruction is hard to comprehend. The suffering and trauma of the injured, bereaved, and those left without homes and the essentials of life is beyond estimation. The rest of the world looks on in disbelief, and we give what aid we can and offer our prayers for those who have died and those who are struggling to hang on to life. At the same time, we may find ourselves with questions about suffering and what it means to have faith in the face of such events. And when answers and explanations are hard to find, stories can offer hope. The story which is told at the beginning of the book of Genesis, which we've heard this morning, is a story of hope. A story which tells us that the world, with all its pain and uncertainty, exists in a relationship with the God who made it for good and who is the source of life for each and every particle of creation. Perhaps today, you and I might be called to have hope for those who are unable to hope, to believe in at least the possibility of new life for those who now experience only death and despair, to be a blessing in this world which God blessed in that story of creation. The blessed world is indeed the world God intended let us accept and receive that blessing and in response be a blessing in and to God's world. Amen. turn now to page five in our orders of service to stand and affirm our faith in God together. <laughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. <laughs> Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit as we now join together in our prayers and intercession. God, 
you brought order out of chaos, light out of darkness, and the known out of mystery. Thank you for giving us our amazing world with beauty, diversity, uniqueness and splendour. Help us to be co-creators with you so we can make our dwellings, neighbourhoods, countries and the earth itself places in which you are well, well pleased. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Light of the world, you promise that light will never be overcome by darkness. Shed your light again in the dark places where there is war and in the dark corners of our hearts so that countries, neighbourhoods and families can live in light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Spirit of peace, thank you for your gentleness in reminding us that you care for our true selves and that you want to calm our fears, meet our needs, clothe us in righteousness and feed us so we need never be hungry. Help us to help those who are hungry or cold or for those who are suffering and remind us that we need to care for ourselves too. We pray too for the sick, asking for healing and renewal, in mind, spirit, and for the healing of their bodies. Speak gently words of comfort and hope and sustain them day by day. We pray particularly for Barry Holloway, Eileen Gilbert, Claire Holden, Dee Chadwick, Baby Joshua and Claire, and for all those injured in the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. Father of light, you brought your son out of the dark tomb into the light of the resurrection day by the transforming power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the hope we now have, now have that death has not sustained. We pray for those who have died recently, Enid Allen, George Alcock, and for all those in the catastrophic earthquakes of Turkey and Syria. We pray for all those who mourn that they will receive your comfort and our help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember too those whose anniversary of death is at this time, thanking you for the light they brought to many lives. We remember Joyce Stokes, Laurie Goodeye, Grace Harris, Margaret Hupfield, and Reg Smith. Lord, in your mercy, Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for your transformation, energy, renewal, and light. May our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify your holy name. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. 
We remain standing now to sing our offertory hymn, number three. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. because you are the source of light and love. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Christ. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Jesus, your Son. He 
gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my <coughs> body, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with his bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, Send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving hearts. And now, with Michael and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though no, we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
to page 14 in our service books and we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and our bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we now stand to sing our final hymn, You Shall Go Out With Joy. Please sit down as we now hear our notices, and he has got those for us. Morning, everyone. Morning. It's uh, nice to hear you all in full voice. So, uh, now we come to all these notices you've been waiting for. Um, first, Lent courses. You should all have one of those, which will give you the details. If not, thank you, Andrew. Right. Um, on the 1st of March, uh, there is something which will delight you all. That's a safeguarding course. So, what has been arranged is that there will be a video showing of the course which you can attend. All you have to do is contact Viv Dobson and we will give you the details. <coughs> you turn up, you sit for an hour watching a video and then you go home. Job done. No test. And it will be uh, on the 1st of March at 1.30 in room 6 on the OBH. And last but not least, um, the AGM is looming up on the horizons, so doubtless we will be looking forward to people to fill the empty spaces on the district council. But there are three people I think deserve a tribute. The three people who are on the DCC, that's Simon, who is, to all intents and purposes, rector of this parish, because that's the job he's doing. There's Andrew, who is our parish warden, and he's doing a tremendous job of just trying to keep things going and to keep things working as they should be. They're doing a great job there, Andrew. And to Rob, who's the treasurer for us, but he's also the parish treasurer and he's doing a damn fine job making the money go as far as possible. So I think we should give him all a clap. <laughs> They're not easy, but at least you know that St. Michael's is standing proud. And that's it for me. Thank you very much, Keith. Just uh, one thing to add from me, really, and that is that later today, 
uh, we have got uh, a confirmation service, a deanery confirmation service that is happening in our parish at St Helen's Church at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Um, we've got uh, seven or eight people being confirmed, the majority of whom are from this parish. Uh, St Michael's uh, singers and musicians are um, helping lead the music alongside um, choir members from St Alphage. Um, and it's going to be a really joyful uh, and enjoyable service. So please do come along if you are able at five o'clock at St Helen's Church this afternoon to support those who are making that step of faith in being confirmed. Let's now stand to hear the words of God's blessing as our service comes to an end. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you on this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.